So driving around Manchester, it's hard not to feel nostalgic about this great city's heritage. And I want you to go back a few years now to 1976, where the Free Trade Hall played host to one of the most important gigs this city has ever seen. A bunch of sweaty oiks came up from London under the name The Sex Pistols and performed in a dingy little room above the Free Trade Hall. This gig has been so steeped in history, myth and legend, it's gone down in local folklore. So much so that a punk aficionado, David Nolan, has written a book on it. And trust me, he was there. He promises us so. This was the home to one of the most notorious, famous punk rock gigs of all time, and now it's a, a 95 star hotel. Uh, there is some irony in it, but um, I've actually been around it, and um, it's a beautiful hotel. It's an expensive hotel. I'm glad I wasn't here in 1976 buying drinks at these prices. 30 or 40 people were in the audience. Um, thousands and thousands and thousands of people have since claimed that they were there because it was such a pivotal gig. Um, so many performers, writers, musicians came out of the audience. Uh, they literally looked at the Sex Pistols and said, I could do better than that. There was, there was no real atmosphere because nobody knew what was going to happen. There was a second gig six weeks later on the 20th of July and lots of people who went to the second gig because it was a sellout then have actually kind of craftily claimed, oh yeah, I was at that first gig, yeah, I wasn't at the second gig, no, 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 everyone else was there, but I wasn't. I was, I was one of the elite at the first one. And, uh, and that's how myths are made. And lots of people prefer the kind of myth, the legend, to the truth. And if that's the case, then I'm, I'm here to spoil it for you. It was revolutionary in as much as it swept away a lot of old garbage. And it brought in a lot of, um, well, you know, uh, a new wave of music. And I've been obsessed with this since, uh, since I was 16. Um, I, when I started work, I got into an argument with someone who claimed that they were there, who claimed that they were at this gig when, uh, when I was 16. And he pulled out some photographs and showed me that he'd taken from the audience. I knew David, I used to work with him a few years back. And uh, brought him the photographs, brought him the ticket stub. And I kept those photographs since I was 16 years old. And now I'm... <laughs> And uh, at the time I said, that would make a great book. It's such a great story about this myth of the Free Trade Hall. It changed Manchester in the sense that literally overnight you had people walking into music shops and buying guitars who never would have thought of buying guitars in the first place. The best example I can give you is um, this gig happened on June the 4th, 1976, which was a Friday, Saturday morning, a guy called Peter Hook from Little Holton went into a music shore up the road and bought his first bass guitar and he plugged it into his nan's stereogram and him and his mate formed a band that became Joy Division, who became New Order, who have influenced bands all across the world. I actually subscribe to the theory that um, the, the kind of seeds of modern Manchester were sown at, at that gig that it turned Manchester from being kind of an old boring Victorian city into the city it is today. Yeah.